So I'm Simon Spora, one of the people who does the railways of Devon and Cornwall. And one of the things I get an awful lot of questions about is how do you lay easement track? Because I know it's not easy. And so I put together a video showing how I do it. There's going to be other ways of doing it. Everyone's going to have their own way. And uh, there are just as effective ways of doing it, in, I, I've no doubt. Uh, but the first starting point, the starting point is your basic, uh, your, your information, your data, the things that you, the, the information you need in order to put your track together. And uh, the key thing for laying track is knowing where it goes. Well, you'll get that from Google Earth in the normal way using the Google Earth overlay, and you'll need to look that up. And I'm not going to cover how to do that now, how to import it. You also need your dem files to make sure that you've got the elevations, the hills and the valleys and all that. And uh, I'm not covering that now either. I'm going to assume that you know how to do that. And if you don't, look it up elsewhere. Uh, but the information uh, sources that I have, the ones I mo use most often, well, I've got two books and some other material that I'll talk to you about. The first uh, book is this one. It's by Ian Allen, and it's called British Mainline Gradient Profiles. Gradient Profiles presents the information in a detailed way probably a bit too detailed really. The second one is this one. It's called Mile by Mile on Britain's Railways. Allegedly be a man called Mr Pike, Mr S.N. Pike. Um, he actually did three of the companies, the LNER, the LMS and the Southern. Uh, the Great Western I think was added later on. Here's how the information is presented in Mile by Mile. On the right hand side you get the gradient, on the left hand side a map and if you get a ruler you can rule across a line and, and see where a gradient is on a particular part of the map. It's pretty good, but it's not terribly detailed. And lastly, there's the material that the train companies supply their own drivers, the up-to-date stuff. Um, it, it looks like this, and um, you need contacts inside the rail industry to get hold of copies. Um, I'm not going to talk about how I get mine. Um, you just need to have the right contacts. And this is the gold standard really. Lots of detail, awful lot of detail about things like signalling, turnouts, overbridges, underbridges, platform lengths, and at the top there, along the top, in detail, what the gradients are, down to the kind of hundreds of yards, tens of yards range. If you can get hold of this stuff, then do. Here's Liscard. Uh, it's the head of the Lou branch and uh, this is how it currently stands in Railways of Devon and Cornwall. It's very much a work in progress, there's not much scenery there. The immediate area, area around the station. Uh, Lou's divided into three platforms, uh, one and two on the main line and three there in the middle of the shot there on the Lou branch itself. Um, and you can see in, uh, in RDC we've got platform three. It runs down to the end of the track with the loop up to the main line there and the main line disappearing off towards Plymouth in the distance. But this is the end at the moment. In RDC6 itself it does go on a little bit more but I've taken that out to uh, explain things a little bit better. So this is the end of the track and I'm going to uh, show you my next steps. So from the uh, track data we know that from this point, the end of the track, down to around this corner here and somewhere around here the A38 goes over this valley uh, and from there until the A38 the track descends at 1 in 59 so we need to know where the bridge is don't we so let's get into editor mode control E and then we'll turn on Google so that we can see where the bridge is that's the Google Earth overlay um, Right, so what have we got? There's the A38, and there's the path of the track. You can see it goes around this corner here, right the way through to here. So until that point, the track descends from there at a ruling gradient of 1 in 59. At this point, I need to say something about DEM files. Um, look it up on Google, find out about it. I'm not going to cover how to get DEM files into the game and all that kind of thing. But what I need to say is that dem, dem files basically provide the elevation for the terrain above uh, the baseline of zero. So it's what gives you your hills and valleys. And you can see here that uh, 
on a straight dem file basis the track sort of loops up and down this is not how the the terrain ends up in real life so dem files aren't going to give you an accurate depiction of what goes on on the ground you can't just take the dem file and assume it's true you can see that at this point here in order to um, go forward I had actually begun to create the valley where the uh, the track goes I mean actually this is on a small embankment here and that goes down still further dem files always smooth out valleys and the tops of hills so the valleys are never deep enough and the hills are never high enough just bear that in mind you can't just trust the dem files anyway for now here's the end of the track it goes around in this loop descending at 1 in 59 which means that if we lay track it's going to be under the ground well that's what we've got to do and what we know is that if you take a position vertically above the track uh, uh, even if it's underground that's where it'll go so we'll begin by selecting the right track so we'll get the track thing here um, if you're selecting track to lay track always go with the track rule current if you press that button there the only track that shows the track that shows there will be following your track rule look up about track rules I'm not going to cover it again but it's really important so there's the end of our track. The track that we want is track wood jointed because as you know on these old Cornish branches you get the old lovely jointed track, you travel along you get the jointed track noise so it's really important to select the right track. So Riviera Line track wood jointed DR it's one we created for ourselves. This is where you put your gradient in uh, uh, 59 um, now, if I it's starting at 59, if I was to go here, it would actually uh, go up at 59. So we've got to talk a minus 59 to make sure that it's going down, and it's minus from the point that you begin to add it. So anyway, here's the, here's the track, and you can see uh, it's beginning to be laid. And oh, we've got a problem here, haven't we? Look, do you see? Uh, it's barely making that that chord it's barely it is actually just about doing it but we might have a problem it's not quite right where I want the middle of the track to be is there and it's giving the me the middle of the track there so look you see up here main line you need to change that to something main line gives uh, gives chords that's turns with a fairly wide radius so we need a tighter radius for that for this particular piece of track so we'll start with passenger which is tighter but not as tight as yard we'll come back to that in a minute so here's passenger and you can see that we're getting immediately a nice tighter curve so uh, here we are this is the point at which it starts to go around to the left so we'll lay a bit of track there boom, and there we are and then uh, it goes around to the corner still it's going down uh, minus 59 and here we go underground and at this it's at this point where we have to trust that the end of the arrow there is giving us approximately where we want it to be so we know it's going to be about there follow it round or oh, there it is to there and click now at this point I would want to see my track so we know it's there somewhere how do you see it well we'll go to the the uh, the elevations tool on the end on the end here there's one called uh, snap uh, this makes the terrain snap to where the track is so you can you can force it to make your cuttings and you can see where your track is going and here we are creating the cutting for the track to go underneath the A38 uh, we'll just continue to do that till the end of the track and there's the end of the track see it goes on a little bit further but it stops snapping at this point here we're still at 1 in 59 going downwards so we're still at minus 59 we'll come back to the track track wood jointed onto the track again and continue to make our track I reckon that's about there and then it starts to go into a tighter turn we need to make sure that we're right above it otherwise it will render it into the wrong place now I've stopped here, we'll, we'll just see how accurate that is because of course you can change it if you haven't got it dead right. Back to the tool that I call the magnet rather than the snap. It's roughly in the right place there so that's good. 
doesn't matter if it's not in exactly the right place because we're going to replace it with easement track in due course. Anyway, this is why it's called the pilot track. So here we are, laying our track. No, not in the right place. Now the reason for that is because we didn't change it back to passenger in order to get the curve we wanted. So let's see what we can do with passenger as opposed to main line. So change to track with jointed to passenger and start to lay the track. That's in roughly the right place now and that's roughly the right place there. Let's see what we get with the magnet. That's roughly right. Not absolutely right because you can see it's turned off a bit so we'll go back and lay that section again. As you can see there's a lot of trial and error here. Don't be, fr don't be afraid of trial and error. Make the cutting then relay the track. Ah! Do you see that even passenger track isn't providing the cord that we need, the, the tightness of curve that we need. So let's go down one more to freight to see what we get with freight. Ah, we do get what we need so we'll go on to that point there and get the magnet again and yes we're roughly where we need to be. Now the trouble is at this point of course we've got our dip in the wrong place so the way to deal with that is go back to the dem tools here uh, and oh, before we do that we need to turn on this one here which shows us the tile that we're working in. Uh, you can see that there's a white boundary there which shows you the tile that you're working in and the tile that we want is this one here and we need to re-import the dem file for this tile uh, just the one not three just the one so we import it we can see that the cutting that we made is now lost and so we'll just need to make that again uh, where's the magnet here's the magnet follow the track around It's at 1 in 59. Good stuff. And it's going to continue to be 1 in 59 until it reaches there. So uh, I'll lay that. So using the technique I've just told you about, I have laid from the end of the track at list card all the way down through this loop a descending track. 1 in 59 to just beyond the end of the A38. Now at the A38 the track gradient increased, uh, the downward gradient increased to 1 in 44, pretty steep in railway terms, and it continued at 1 in 44 until it reached the litho crossing. So we know that the litho crossing is just a little bit further on from the end of the A38 I can't tell from the overlay here exactly where it is. I have very strong suspicions about this area here. I can't see another obvious place for it, perhaps here, but I think that's a bit too far on. Perhaps there, but that's definitely, I think, too far on. So the next step would be to look at Google Maps, Google Earth or Google Maps without being on an overlay because you get a better view. So we've established here is Belitho Crossing little bit further on from the A38 viaduct which is exactly where we'd expect it to be. We know that the A38 viaduct is where the gradient changes from 1 in 59 to 1 in 44, that's descending. Um, so at Belitho it changes uh, from 1 in 44 to 1 in 90. Across the actual crossing itself it's 1 in 90 and then just the other side of the crossing the gradient increases to uh, 1 in 40, that's minus 1 in 40. So we need to select our track, so track rule, track wood jointed, change the main line to passenger, go down there so we can see what we're doing, and lay the track, oh we haven't changed the gradient, you see how easy it is to forget that. The gradient at this point becomes minus 44. 
so attach again follow the track round to just before the crossing uh, use the magnet to uncover the track just before the crossing on the crossing itself the gradient changes so select track again we know the gradient across the crossing is 1 in 90 so it's minus 90 uh, track jointed Move. Ooh, we didn't change did we to passengers or freight see how easy it is to do that's quite tight there so I'm going to change it to freight actually so across mm, that really is tight isn't it we might need to change that but we'll see so across the crossing uh, get the magnet to see what we've just created yeah that's that's tight enough and then the other side of the crossing the gradient increases to 1 in 40 that's descending at 1 in 40 and it descends at 1 in 40 all the way underneath the viaduct so we'll go past the viaduct at 1 in 40 and then take stock uh, changing to trackward jointed to uh, I'm going to change the yard because this is a very tight corner here. Uh, we're now going to be descending at 1 in 40, we're just checking the gradient there is 1 in 90, changed it to 1 in 40, track wood jointed, uh, don't worry about the speed yet, uh, changing it to yard and there there, 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 there. At this point we'll take stock with the magnet again just to make sure we're still on track. Uh, force the cutting with the magnet. Not quite on track there. You can see how important it is, can't you, to review this. But that's what the pilot track is all about. It's about making sure we're in the right place. So in a minute, there. So we're going to now delete this track. It's twists and turns in an unhelpful, inaccurate way. It's not quite right there. So from this point on we can relay again, go back to track, track rule, jointed, yard, 1 in 40 is correct, and I'm ready to go. So, follow it's about right. It's almost straight there, isn't it? Not quite. No such thing as a straight track in Cornwall. About right there, and at this point we go underneath. So we know that it continues at 1 in 40 to just the other side of this viaduct. Now, this is interesting because it's now beginning to show. Right, so um, go back to the magnet, make sure our cutting is correct. we must oh no did you see the way the magnet has pulled it up there we'll deal with that in a minute it's pulled it up to the higher level track on the actual viaduct so we just need to get that down again my approach to this would be to use the smoothing tool uh, set to around about 20 go down with it like that go back to the magnet um, set that back to 10 um, go here, oh, going up again, so undo that, go there, and go, oh. <laughs> see how easy it is to do that, uh, go there, and then at this point clearly what we need to do is to manually lower it, because as soon as we use the magnet it's just going to pull it up to the viaduct, and we'll sort that out in detail a bit later on. 
So at this point we've got some decisions to take about gradient changes. We know that the track's descending at 1 in 40 to just beyond this viaduct. Just beyond the viaduct it changes to a short period of 1 in 34, then it changes to a longer period of 1 in 51 until just before the first accommodation bridge which is clearly here and just before this bridge it changes to 1 in 38. So at this point this is where I don't get too purist about things I know roughly where the gradient changes take place um, and so what I'm going to do is put in some markers it doesn't matter what you use as your marker it just so happens that tall thin chimneys I think are quite good and here's a tall thin chimney so we know that at this point it's going to change to roughly 1 in 34 to around about two thirds of the way along here it's going to be 1 in uh, sorry this is from here until around about here it's 1 in 34 from here until just before the accommodation bridge it's 1 in 51 so there's my three markers 1 in 40 to there, 1 in 34 in this section, 1 in 51 in this section. So the first thing to do is to cut that out, it just so happens to be in just the right place, doesn't it? So delete that. We're going to change the track gradient now to descending at 1 in 34. Uh, choose our track. Uh, it's very twisty so I'm going for yard and it's descending one in three. I'll just check that and we'll go to the end, make sure that we're connected properly. It's slightly underground which is why it's not made anyway. Uh, so, twisty turny bit there. Oh, it's emerged again so that's good. We can see what we're doing. Another turny bit until we get to there and then it starts to turn again. Now, back to the magnet tell us if we've got it in the right place roughly is doesn't have to be absolutely spot on because we're going to be changing it to easement track of course but um, and then that bit there goes at uh, one in check again keep checking remember that thing from DIY measure twice cut once uh, I've learn that so many times. Anyway, we're now going down at 1 in 51 rather than 1 in 34. We'll change to uh, track wood yard 51. Quick check. Here we go. We're at 51 going round to there. We need to find the end again, so make the cut. we know this is going to be in a cutting because there's a bridge goes over it <coughs> so just before the bridge it changes to 1 in 38 so minus 38 track yard and the tram continues on at 1 in 38 for quite some time uh, almost all the way to the next accommodation bridge actually so a quick look here can I see it not quite but don't worry about that just for yet so there and there and there when we, what we do know is when we do get to an accommodation bridge we've gone too far and there and there so we've just laid a fair amount of track it goes there we haven't cut the made the cutting yet just want to say something about saving. Um, save often, save frequently. I've got a rail driver so I've got a button on it on the rail driver which says save prompt. I can just press my button there. If, it, if there were chat I'd just done a save but if there had been changes it would have let me save there. You probably have to click on here to save your changes. Uh, it'll give you the option to save whether you want to save or not uh, and do that often. So anyway I've got that covered. Back to E, turn uh, Google on again and let's make our cutting the track is all there I'm just checking to make sure we've got it in the right place not quite there look, but that doesn't matter because this is pilot track it's close enough we can get it just right when we get the 
easement in a minute. It's, uh, the, main, the main purpose of laying pilot track is to make the cuttings so that you can see what you're doing with easement track a bit later on. You need to be able to see what you're doing for obvious reasons. So the next thing I want to do is to establish exactly where the next uh, bridge is going to be, where the next bridge is. Which isn't difficult, is it? Because it's right there. And if we take a quick consult of the track again, the track plan, you can see that the gradient changes from 38 to 47 just before a fixed distance and that is approximately one half of the way towards that bridge between the, after the accommodation bridge and then just before the accommodation bridge it changes back to 1 in 38 and the 1 in 38 basically goes most of the way to the uh, crossover so um, let's uh, put one of our chimneys down, we'll copy it, make some decisions about where we're going to make those changes. So the accommodation bridge is there, the next bridge is there, the gradient changes to 1 in 38 just before halfway, so between these two bridges that is so roughly there and then uh, a short way further along towards the bridge, about halfway to the bridge itself, it changes to 1 in 38. Um, and then it continues at 1 in 38, almost all the way to the turnout, which is there. Um, so, it doesn't give an it's actually the seven mile mark it's virtually spot on the seven mile mark so um, let's say there so having checked um, those gradients we know that this is now inaccurate you can see down the bottom shows it here one in 38 and we know that actually at that point it has made a change it's changed to uh, one in 47 so we'll delete these two, these lengths of track here and change our gradient to 1 in 47, minus 47 that is, uh, track word, yard, have to fiddle about a bit more to make sure you've got it properly connected. So this is yard at 1 in 47 through to this point where we change the gradient to 1 in 38. That's pretty steep in railway terms. Must have been interesting in steam days. So at the end it follows through to roughly there. Get right above so that it's approximately in the right place. 1 in 38. 1 in 38 all the way to this point. Um, we'll cut it again now to make sure we're doing roughly right. Uh, steep isn't it? There it is. doesn't have to be perfect, the perfect bit comes a bit later on. Right, now I actually think it's a little bit too close, so I don't think that's 1 in 38, I want to, this is an example of how you can make, you can change your mind about things. Uh, this section here I think is almost certainly longer you can use the track cutting tool to get that roughly where we want it to be and like I said 
we'll, we can confirm all this a bit later on, we'll come back to that and we know that that last bit of track going all the way to the turnout is at 1 in 63. So now we change the gradient to 1 in 63, oh not concrete, uh, wood jointed, yard, and then <coughs> well, there's another bit there we forgot to get rid of, so that bit, got rid of that bit, and then uh, jointed, yard, 1 in 63 all the way to very close to the turnout. Now the thing about TS is that TS, train sim, will not do turnouts on a gradient. Or it can, no, uh, but as long as both tracks leading to the turnout are the same gradient, which they won't be in this case because the track coming up from Lou is approaching this point at 1 in 63. Um, so it's approaching at 1 in 63 upwards and we're approaching at 1 in 63 downwards. So this section here, in order to achieve a, a work, a turnout that works, has got to be uh, at zero, really. Good compromise between up 63 and down 63. So anyway, the point is that, that here we've got the pilot track laid all the way from this guard through the loop and down to the junction at Coombe Crossing. So it's at this point that we begin to lay easement track. How very exciting. I said at the beginning, this is how I do it. Um, some of it is is what you're going to have to do but there are other tricks and techniques other priorities and all that kind of thing you'll probably work out some of your own solutions to things i'm only going to show you what i do um, so obviously the first thing you've got to do this twirly thing here select the radio button for easement track uh, you can see here uh, this is the snap to terrain um, i wouldn't deploy that because basically you've set your gradient so you don't want it to deploy to terrain uh, you do want to snap to track, um, uh, but you do need to be very careful about selecting the right track style here and the right track rule. You can see that this is the Devon Rails track rule. Um, the track I want is Trackwood Jointed DR, track mode that's one we developed for ourselves. Um, you could, if you wanted, lay the track with the correct speeds selected. I don't. Um, for something as complicated as easement track where I know that I'm going to be going back and deleting and relaying several times um, because it comes at 90 miles an hour from the box as it were I'd have to change this every time which gets really boring so I'll just leave it there and change the final track to the final track speed at the end the track speed for this branch is of course 25 miles an hour it's a pretty slow experience um, we obviously don't want main line because we know that it doesn't give us the sharpness that we need Easement with yard is very tricky. I'll show you that in a minute. We'll use it when we have to, but not if we don't. Um, freight we know was usable, um, so we know that we can at least start with freight. But uh, easement struggles with these reverse turns. You'll see in a minute. I will struggle to get this reverse turn correct. Uh, anyway, so uh, let's begin to lay some track and see what happens. So we'll go to the end there, and you can see that there are various colours coming at the end. Uh, no, I don't want freight, do I? I want passenger. You can see there's various colours coming out at the end. And that shows you the potential paths, the potential way forward for the track. Uh, and this is where it might go. And we know that at this point uh, we'd want it to follow this path. Um, but I can tell you that we, we are not going to be able to use passenger at this point. We're not going to be able to use passenger because we would need to change the direction of the track at this point. Um, let's, well, let's lay some and see what happens if we try to do just that. Um, we'll go down a bit closer. That's the point at which we want the, the tractor to reverse the curve. Uh, if, if, if it was going to reverse the curve, there would need to be, in the easement, in this purple, or in one of these colours here, a, a line across. Uh, a bit like that line there, that shows us where the end of our track is. Um, 
that's the point at which if we were able to use passenger we'd stop and that's 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 absolutely where we want it to be that's great but you can see here there's no option for us to go onto our reverse curve it only, it only allows us to do this so we cannot use uh, passenger at this point so we need to try one with a tighter curve freight uh, you can see you get a very similar thing here but the lengths that it enables you to go forward are much shorter and this is that do you see that line there that that one there that line going across those are the lines that enable us to change direction so um, that's roughly right to that point and you can see but we don't want it to go so far you see at this point it's it's turned to the right so uh, let's lay to this point which is correct and then try to make that reverse curve it's not up can you see that yellow line that yellow line is the point at which this track would enable us to change direction and you can see if at this point we to select that we could then start to turn we could do our turn now that's actually not quite the curve that we want but that is in essence how you achieve it and I'm just going to fiddle now and you can watch how I fiddle it to achieve what I want I need it to go and can you see there there is a light grey track which if I go backwards and forwards gives us other options I know I need this curve to go a little bit further I don't need it to go that far I want it to actually make the change around about there and I want to see if that grey track gives me that option if I choose it I'm looking for that yellow straight ahead track it's not giving it to me at the moment I might need to go a little bit further forward there it is there it is there is the straightforward track that will give us the chance to make the change it's not quite correct but we might be able to make use of this and there it is do you see the reverse curve is beginning there's the reverse curve just going around the corner there it's not it's a bit too tight isn't it it's a bit too tight but what I've learned is that if I change this back to passenger at this moment it wouldn't uh, I, I need to just proceed a little bit with it and then change it to passenger and we'll see what happens here actually that's just what we need that's just what we need and you can see that grey track following the path that we want do you see it just beyond the road viaduct there it's giving us just what we need or is it you might need to really think hard about this before you choose which path let's see what that does that's I think a little bit too tight so start again never be fr never be frightened to start again ah now there's a grey one that's giving us just what we want there it is there it is you can follow it through and at that point that's where we get another reverse curve you can see it there bending slightly left and then right now I can't achieve this with freight, with passenger rather, you can see it's not gonna it's not gonna give me the options I want. So you need to go back to freight. And here's freight. Um, we know we want the reverse curve to begin approximately there, this kind of area. Um, gee, that's good it's a bit tighter than that so we'll go around 
there. The reverse curve will be... Ah, that is absolutely perfect. You can see that it's offering me a straight there that I can then select and then begin to make my reverse curve. Perfect. Just what I needed. There is the beginnings of the reverse curve. And at this point it's going to be easier because that's quite a gentle curve. I can switch back to passenger which gives much longer options. Ah, now, the problem here, you can see it's not giving me an easement option. It doesn't want me to latch on. Now, I don't know why this is. It works sometimes, it doesn't work at others. But what, what I know is that I need to change this back to freight and to begin to make this curve using freight, you can see there is the grey line. You can see it there wobbling approximately exactly where we need it to be. Uh, and then it goes not quite tight enough. So at the point at which you, you can click it and then you get the option again to make it tighter. That's just about right. And it's big beginning to make it a bit too tight. Let's see if it's offering me passenger again. No, nope, it won't offer me passenger, so we're stuck with freight for now. Ah, that. Didn't you see ahead there? There's that grey line, and if I fiddle backwards and forwards, it'll get closer to what we want. This line's too tight. The grey line isn't quite tight enough, but I know that if I... Ah, there we go. Can you see it's offering me a grey line absolutely where I want it to be? Um, it's gone again. Ah, here we are. See, it's fiddling. There it is. The grey line's where we want it to be. It keeps disappearing. And there it goes. There is the grey line. Just the right place, I believe. I just want to double check that. This is, ah, yes it is, it's just right. So we know it's right to that point there. At this point, I'm going to just tighten up my cutting so that I can see it correctly. And there you can see it's just about spot on the track line there. Um, it may be that it'll offer me freight, uh, track ball, track with jointed, passenger, no, nope. don't give me passenger, uh, freight, I think we're stuck with freight for now. You just have to see, sometimes it gives you what you want, sometimes it doesn't. Right, now you can see that there's a grey line there which is changing itself about which will give us our chance to say yes, that's what we want. And at this point here, because what we know is that this red line here is we need it to be, the track needs to be roughly lined up so that it's in the right place there. And so fiddle, and then this is the whole thing, fiddle, 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 just keep fiddling. It will eventually give you what you want. Keep fiddling. Uh, I'm going to choose that path. I need it to line up. I'm not sure that it's going to... Ah, there's a tighter one. Do you see it? There it goes. There it goes. There's the tighter one there. There's the tighter one. So we need to choose that option for at least a short while to get us back. There, do you see? Do you see it lining up nicely? It's not quite giving us exactly what we want, but we know we can follow it for a period. And then at this point, we line up there. Now bear in mind that's pilot track. It wasn't laid quite correctly. 
Um, we can now cut that back, turn off the overlay and just take a look at what we've achieved. So let's see, we go back to the beginning, we go down, we've got a good reverse curve, we follow the line we want, all the way to here. <coughs> Not quite happy about that angle there. Not quite happy about that. So let's look at this track path again. We can see here that actually the track passes above rather than on this yellow line here. So actually that is roughly right. Good stuff, good stuff. So the gradient at this point changes then from 1 in 59 here to one in 44 there. So we can delete the one in 44 track that finishes there and add some easemented 144 track. Good jointed minus 44 freight. Um, we can see what we've been offered is a bit too tight for us, but we know that if we begin on it, it will offer alternative paths if we fiddle and there is an alternative path being offered you can see it there so it's just very nearly there so go forward just a little bit and see what we get offered on the next ah here it goes Still not exactly what we want. It's close. This is the important thing about fiddling backwards and forwards. Um, right. See, that's too tight, so we need to start again there. That wasn't quite what we wanted. Um, right, so. Fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. Mm. It ain't easy. Something close there, though. Um, there, do you see it? There's our line. There, perfect. <coughs> not exactly right at the end there so a bit more fiddling to be done but it's close right there's our there you see that grey line that's not right is it Before I do anything else, I'm going to move the cutting back so I can see better what I'm doing. See those grey lines a bit better. You can recreate the cuttings later on if you need to. Um, and one thing, of course, to bear in mind, which I haven't covered just yet, we're still on 144, which is good. Track the rusty jointed DR and freight is that you can. You can actually start halfway back like this. No. 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 You can see that I think we're getting closer now. This is good that it's not easy, so you can see that you've got a fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. Um, trying to DR. Right. Getting closer now, though. Ah, that's it, that's what we want. If you can see it there. So that's the point at which the gradient changes. 
this section here is at 1 in 90. So the next bit, let's just get that cutting right back so we can see what we're doing. The next bit is at 1 in 90. Track with jointed DR. Freight. stick with that to this point. There's our crossing. Now this next section here, 1 in 40. And I believe 1 in 40 carries on now for quite some time. Yes it does. So this will be an opportunity to switch back to passenger and I'll show you how in a minute. So we're at 1 in 40 throughout that entire bit there. We have to start on freight. So 1 in 40. Um, track work jointed 1 in 40. Freight. our perfect line. You see I got that by fiddling backwards and forwards. Now there's a really tight reverse curve there so this isn't going to be easy. Um, this, can you see in front of the white section of track there are two purple ones and each of them has got a red bar, a bar, a purple bar going in across in front of it. That's the point at which you can switch back to straight track and from having the straight track you can then switch to the reverse curve. So we'll get that, we'll get the, the bar in front, the, the purple bar in front, roughly where we need it to be. And you can see it's offering us uh, let's go down close. Get that reverse curve sorted out. Um, right, so there's an offer there, but that's not quite in the right place. We've got to go a little bit further on. So go a bit further, and there is our straight track. So follow the path of that straight track for just a short while, and it's after it's had a short bit of straight track that we can go back to passenger. Now, passenger's good at this point because we've gone past a really curvaceous reverse turn switchy tight turn bit into a less challenging bit uh, and passenger gives you more sweeping longer term options you'll see so we're in passenger and we can see that the path we want to take isn't quite straight it's a slight turn to the left so if we fiddle backwards and forwards you can see the red the gray line there and you get your grey line to roughly where you want it to be and you can see I have. Um, at that point roughly here it becomes more curved and you can see that there's an option there on the purple one which is roughly where we need it to be. So click when you're there, follow that around. Now can you see again at the front of the sec at the front whittling backwards and forwards there's a bit there with a line and it's at that point where we need it to reverse curve in the other direction so we accept that go forward to the line and it becomes yellow take a bit of yellow and then go forwards following the reverse curve path the one that we want and there it is and go forwards to there and actually that's a really good match up to where we, exactly where we need to be. So using the technique I've just described to you I finished laying off the track in blue Peter style so here's something I prepared earlier you'll see that we started there just outside Liscard moved around in a big loop went underneath the main line 
came down to the branch up from Lou and I laid a little bit of track down towards Lou. This comes up from Lou, this comes down from this guard, runs up to a station in this area here and uh, the trains come down here reverse and then go on to Lou. There's one final thing to do. You've, you've laid your pilot track, you've replaced it with easement track <coughs> and you'll know that uh, throughout the, the entire process it was either freight or yard or passenger all that kind of thing what you need to do then at the end as a final thing is change the track property because if the dispatcher sees track as passenger it won't actually send sorry as freight rather it won't send passenger trains down it so you need to change track properties if you lay to freight back to mainline. Mainline will send anything. You can have freight, passengers, whatever you like. But uh, anyway, you need to do that. So mainline. Now we know that throughout the uh, the branch that the speed, the line speed is 25. So, or this section of the track that we've been on is 25 anyway. Um, I would need to check that for going on down to Lou, but I'll assume it's 25 at the moment. So you can change the line speed to 25. Um, just to show you how I did that again, you select the track using the select tool from the linear objects, that's the lofts, the track, road, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you select it by uh, left clicking, left clicking. Uh, and then dragging along the section of track you want to change all the way up to this guard. You can do it all at once. Make sure you don't drop it because you'll have to start again. All the way to there. And we'll change that to 25. I suspect that round here will be slightly different, but you'll have to sort that out. Um, the easement bit is the only way to get super elevation, but in a minor, if a, a little branch like this with very sharp curves, super elevation is not appropriate. I'll show you why. Let's just turn it on. Um, you'll see that this section here, when it was laid, was probably laid as main or passenger. This section here will have been laid as freight. Now, passenger and freight have different angles of super elevation. If you put super elevation onto freight, the angles just get too much, and the vehicles and locomotives going over this section, they would be a sudden lurch. So, for tiny branches at 25 miles an hour, I wouldn't bother with super elevation. I'm sure they do put it in in real life, but uh, it's not going to be much for that kind of speed. Um, super elevation, I've just shown you how to turn it on, and you can do this. It would be relevant and appropriate for this kind of track here. You'll see that if we turn super elevation on, well, even that's a bit steep, really. You wouldn't do that in real life, would you? So, anyway, that's how you do it. And I hope that helps. And um, get in touch if you want to ask anything. But I think for now, that'll be it. Bye-bye.